Why hello there fellow fablings, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Fabledom Episode 3, Red for Fablings. Another thing I want to build is uh, yet another lumber camp. Because our wood amount is barely keeping up pace with demand. And as soon as I can afford a forester, I'll add one there, too. The uh, the lumber camps that I have are essentially equally spaced with one another. Um, you know, for, not that it really matters. And it looks like, no, we're not going to um, give money for the fairies. So here, this little five here indicates that I have five more days to respond. I'm going to say, yeah, it's not that bad. And half the crops in my farms, or roughly half the crops, because it was a chance, uh, got exterminated. So, they'll have to get back to work. Uh, happy surprise. So, I delivered the gift of um, of coal properly, and as you can see, we are now friends. So, I can court her by uh, gifting out 30 coal, but uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. So, courting. Should we formally court Winifred? So, that'd be 30 more coal sent to her as a courting gift. Man, she likes coal. A lot. A lot more than I do, that's for sure. Alright, then we got a third forester up there. And if uh, if not, what we can do is we can then uh, start courting either Giovanni or... You know what? How about that? I'll, I'll ask that way. Who should we officially court? And you can only court one person at a time. Yeah. Now, now you can actually vote for who. It's kind of like the age-old argument playing Stardew of like, you know, who do you marry? There's only one right answer, and I don't know what it is. It's personal preference, that's the answer. Sixty six days of food, twenty seven days of coal. Looking good, looking good. I think my next investment is going to be a second stone camp to start. Uh, oh, we have to build around Bob. Bob, I can't afford the road around you. Oh, now I can. And maybe I'll complete the road this way, too. Getting a second stone camp so that we can uh, really stockpile the amount of stone that we have. Um, because we'll need it. I might want another stockpile, too. The original stockpile is uh, 320 out of 450 in terms of how much it can hold. And you can't add more lots. Stockpiles uh, only go up to three lot max. Okay. Team Agnes. Uh, what should I do next? Court Agnes? Expand territory? Or um, build hero quarter. So all of these three options cost gold. 
I have a finite amount of it, so I want to know how to use it. Oh, in uh, it's kind of moot because the first thing I really need to do is to get myself another house because I'm about to uh, run out of space. Let's build this as a priority because new immigrants come in in three days and I don't have housing for them. I'm not going to welcome them yet, because if I welcome one out of two, the other one will leave. So I'm going to wait for this uh, homestead to be built, and then I'll welcome both. Looks like we're going to expand territory next. Okay. So where should I expand territory? The exp expansion of territory is going to cost me uh, 200, and I can expand... where to expand. So, north, west. Wow, I can't spell it all. Northwest. So, northwest has an abandoned graveyard and trees, and also like a big hill. Um, north has a ruins and a pig herd. Pig herd. Uh, west has a small stone deposit. I'm not even going to include west because it's kind of far flung. I'm not going to use it. So, southwest has trees. And south has trees and an iron deposit. And those are the four options I'm going to include. So, again, to reiterate, northwest, which is a demand and graveyard, a giant hill and trees. North is a ruins and pig hill, uh, herd. Um, south is an iron deposit with trees. And southwest is trees. Uh, south and southwest would open up the area to expand more homesteads. I don't urgently need that territory, though. Uh, but, uh, and then... North would give us pig herds and northwest an abandoned graveyard. Abandoned. Uh huh. And I'm going to need 200 gold to be able to do that, so more than I currently have. Doing the magical math. Okay, 76 days of food, 31 days of coal. We are all set for winter, and we're about halfway through fall. So, looking pretty good. Looks like uh, another season of survival. The next milestone is Big Village, and I'm going to hit it with the next set of newcomers, too. So that's cool. The granary is reporting as full. Right? So that's this little icon here. Well, uh, this icon. It uh, doesn't have any space left, so if we click it, it is 100% full of vegetables. So it looks like we're in another granary, and, well, I just so happen to have, like, space next to it. Um, south, let's call this poll a little early, because I have a new event to attend to. So it looks like we're going to expand south into this section, the iron deposit in the trees. Fablings in need. Your grace, we have recently left our realm due to the horrible conditions we were forced to live in. We're hoping to settle here with you. However, we could use some coin to help us get started. We promise to work hard. So I can either um, personally, I can pay the coin to have them join. I can personally welcome them, which costs nobility. I can turn them down at no penalty. So those are three options. Do we welcome the refugees? Yes, with coin. Yes, with nobility. Or just simply no.
And David, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the channel, man. I'll drink to that. Milestone reached. A new population milestone has been reached. Well done. We can now call ourselves a big village. Going forward, expect recurring payments of 52 coin. I receive 175. I can now make a stone masonry, a bakery, and a street theater. Uh, it also gave me enough coin to buy the southern territory. So, bada bing, bada boom. Purchased. And, um, it's probably not worth changing over the crops from pumpkin to wheat now, considering it's the 19th of fall. But, uh, next spring I can consider making, uh, wheat as well. So it looks like you guys want me to admit them with nobility. So I'm going to purposely, uh, personally welcome them. Done. Uh, and then... The current priority is going to be up to you. So, what should I do next? Um, meet Agnes, because I haven't even sent a messenger out that way just yet. Or um, get a hero. So the street theater adds a lot of desirability to the area, but it's a very small region that it affects. Unlike the inn and the messenger's guild, which is much larger. I can't afford it, so I can't show you what the region is, but uh, the stone masonry is very much like the sawmill. It allows you to process stone into stone brick, and we're going to want one of those pretty early on as well. Um, it has a very bad desirability in its region of negative 10. That's worse than everything else. So keep it away from your housing, unless you don't want people to immigrate. And the second granary is all set, so we'll get that, uh, we'll get someone working in there to help empty out the farms, which are completely full of food. So if you're wondering, the cost to meet Agnes is 150 gold, and then to get a hero is about 200 gold. So they're both uh, gold intensive. Work manager, thank you for the uh, the follow. Welcome to the stream. Wood looks pretty good. We're at 223. Our regular stockpiles are very close to overflowing, so that's something I'm going to want to probably set up uh, sooner or later. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up here closer to this um, woodcutter and this stone. Hey, Torvaskar, thank you for the sub, too. You love this game? It's cool seeing me play it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really cute and relaxing game, for sure. All right, the stockpile's done. I'm going to fire the dude in the sawmill and put him in the stockpile. Actually, let me take a look at my workplaces. See if there's anyone I can shift around. Oh, one of the laborers I can probably shift. There we go. All right, get a hero. So that's uh, 200 gold. It's going to take me a minute to get there. One of the things I could do in the process, because I'm not actually greeting anyone, is lock down the messenger guild, lock down the inn. It will slow down immigration, um, but I currently don't even have space for them to move into. I'll work towards that now, but, uh, but that's going to save me some coin if I'm not overly concerned about... Um, oh, I angled that the wrong way. I'm not overly concerned about uh, about the rate at which people move in, which I'm not. So I'm going to 
high priority this homestead so I can actually admit both of the two pe peasants that are asking to join, and then to put uh, some of the furloughed in and messenger guild workers as the laborer's hut to get that built faster. So this is the cost cutting that I'm referring to. If I really wanted to cut costs, I could also uh, lock down the well, but that only saves me three gold. I can also close the sawmill. That's another 10 gold. Coal makers are five apiece. I can close, I'll keep them open for now, but like I could probably afford to close them too because we have a nice surplus of coal, uh, of coal. And then, you know, the stone camps have their own upkeep. But at some point you don't, you, you simply kind of run out of things for people to do reasonably, like in terms of um, alternative work when you close down their, their uh, work facility. So one of the things you could do is to have a bunch of lumber camps because lumber camps are free. Um, the forester attachments do have upkeep, but the lumber camps themselves, you can have as many as you want, and then to put furloughed people into those spots. Uh, this is weird. Why can't I admit both people? I have the space. Yeah, whatever, I'll just admit one. It's better than zero, right? I, for some reason or another, this homestead, like, wasn't registering as being built, even though it was built. So one more tax period, and I should be able to afford that hero uh, with all the cost-cutting measures I just took. I think I'm also going to choose to convert the farm, this farm specifically, over from Pumpkin. And I'm getting refunded in coin, if you're wondering, over to wheat. So wheat is cheaper uh, to put the fields down as well, so this is going to help me save money, which is, you know, a good thing. Three more. Go like that. Alright, so now we'll have a wheat farm. I'll need to save up for a windmill and a bakery, but, uh, no, we'll get around to that. That gives me the money for a hero's tent. Not that it's necessary, but I'm going to put the hero's tent uh, sort of closer to the population center with the idea that, like, he's a man of the people. Again, this is, like, role-playing. There's no radius of effect or anything like that for a hero's quarter. The next goal will be courting Agnes. So I need to save up for the messenger. Oh, what a specimen! Your hero has arrived. The hero is your kingdom's strongest fighter. It can interact with secrets in the realm, level up, and even equip new items. Oh, go on, try giving it an order. Okay, so here's the hero. He's Fergus. Uh, opening his inventory, I can give him a hat. So one hat gives damage and attack speed. And a trinket. And he has three trinket slots. I'll uh, give him the Essence of Balance, which is more damage, attack speed, health, and health regeneration. And then I can send Fergus up to the encounters. Like, for instance, Bob Barkskin. So I'm going to have Fergus go inspect Bob Barkskin. Claim my little reward there, too. Poic Explorer, thank you for the uh, the sub. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, what should I do next? Send a messenger to Agnes or build a windmill and bakery? Both cost gold. Uh, the messenger to Agnes I'll have the money for in four days. And the windmill costs 50 and the bakery costs 100 so they literally cost the same amount 150 a piece so you guys can pick um how to invest my 150 coin and actually i'm not gonna do the uh bot box skin just yet because that also will result in a poll so i'm gonna wait until this poll is resolved so i'll give you one minute to vote in this one bing there it is
Um, oh, does... no? What? Why is this house not working? Again, I don't seem to be able to add people to that house, and I'm not sure why. Oops, that's not where I meant to build that. I'll build another house back here. Did the houses upgrade at all? No. There's different types of housing once you advance far enough. But uh, the homesteads stay as homesteads. So, windmill and bakery, got it. Maybe because of the road? I don't think so. Well, what I could do is I could just blow this house up. I'll get refunded. And build it again. So I have two housing, uh, two houses that are uh, under construction. Hopefully, one of them will be able to admit the peasants. All right, uh, Bob Barkin, let's do that. Prince Yoda, greetings, young seedling. It's been quite a while since I've had a visitor. My name is Bob. Apart from growing a glorious mustache, I am also the keeper of these great forests. I can either befriend Bob Barkskin, and that would give me a buff called Bob's Friends, and trees grow faster um, from the forester, or I can chop them down and get the essence of regeneration, which is a powerful health regeneration trinket. What to do with Bob? A friend or chop down? And uh, Banlish, thank you for the raid, dude. You, you and your viewers get to decide whether or not I'm chopping a tree down. I'm going to do nothing for now. Uh, welcome. Uh, what were you... You were playing... Uh, above Snakes, right? Or... Right? I think? I, I was... Uh... Yes, you were. Okay, good. Just making sure. I already knew that. Between you and me, I was kind of lurking. Um, my viewers, if you haven't checked out Banlish, he's a very similar content creator to myself, where we both play... You know, the, a variety of games very similar to one another, and um, I enjoy his content. You should check him out. I cannot plug him any more than that. Do it. You won't regret it. It is a fun time. I, I really like Above Snakes and how it like procedurally generates new zones based upon choices. Um, that kind of almost feels like a card game in a way. You know what I'm talking about? But uh, very unique sort of game design and... and uh, uh, a lot of fun replayability. But welcome. Uh, if you're wondering about this game, this is a very casual, laid-back, like, city builder. And... Oh, you know what's happening? I can only admit... I know what's going on. I can only admit one of the two people, because my, um... The attractiveness of my town is not that high. So... Here I was thinking that the houses were broken, but no. My brain was, so... Um, let's go ahead and get the windmill... Uh, I'll put that here, right next to the wheat field. That seems fitting. And then also get the bakery. So the bakery has a uh, a region that it affects. And what I'm going to do is displace this homestead. So, sorry, homestead. You're getting blown up. Eminent domain, let's call it. Uh, displace this homestead and put a bakery here. Because this bakery will cover all the housing. And then the people in that homestead just got, uh, they'll get these new homes that I'm in the process of building. Yeah, for my for my channel, I swing so violently between, like, the most atrocious of war crimes to, like, the very family-friendly, like, city builders where you, you know, where it's like Fable or something like that. So you guys, uh, I think you got, you want me to befriend Bob. So let, let me, let me close that poll. Uh, that, in my opinion, is definitely the stronger of the two options. 
it allows your foresters to work more efficiently and well that's awesome so you get a little boon up here bob's friends trees affected by the forester need six days less to grow and if you're wondering all of the encounters uh on the map so like the abandoned graveyard or the ruins they're all stuff that your hero can go to for various benefits a lot of them are just like cosmetics a lot of them give you decorations um, so I already have some decorations. So I have the uh, standing horizontal flag and the wooden barrier and the wooden spikes. That's decorations as a result of getting the hero's tent. But um, uh, some of the random things out here allow you to get unlock special decorations as well. Sometimes you get items and things like that, but not always. Yeah, the whiplash between War Crimes and Cozy. It's like the new Netflix and chill. <laughs> war crime, Crimes and, and Cozy. <laughs> so, so twisted. It's what I'm about, apparently. So let's high priority the bakery and the windmill. Get those up. Uh, I mean, we're only halfway through winter, so it's going to be a while until we even have grain to uh, to mill. But it's nice to have a bakery up and running anyway. So how have you been doing? Everything going well in in Banland? Avoiding the pink? Okay, that sounds really dirty when people don't know your channel. Um, his viewers get, uh, well, I'll call it, encourage him to wear uh, to pink clothing. So that's what I mean by avoiding the pink. Uh, not something more... Uh, there's not uh, any sexual entendre there. As far as I know. I haven't checked. <laughs> I'll just have to ring... Uh, Ban's wife and ask, uh, oh, is he uh, avoiding the pink? <laughs> what? Uh, so let's go ahead and, and check my theory about the whole they're not moving in because it's not pleasant enough by opening the Messengers Guild and the, um, the inn. So that the happiness goes up and maybe I get the option to admit additional visitors. I, I'm not really sure that it affects retroactively. So it looks like still only just one of the two visitors wants to stay because it's not yeah, try to get the average happiness to 60 and above to convince another visitor to stay. So it looks like it isn't retroactive. I can only admit one. Lesson learned. Uh, make things happy when you can. Or, or keep it at least above 60. Uh, taking a look. 61 days of food. 17 days of coal for the winter. Uh, there's only 11 days of winter left, so that's fine. Lumber and stone looks pretty good. I do have one unemployed person, but soon they're going to become a baker. Dang, that is a shop vac worth of drywall dust into your office. Oh my lord. I cannot imagine how awful that is. That sucks. I'd be so tempted to just be like, yeah, I don't know. I would, I would not be pleased with that. I've had some contractor... A oh god in North Carolina. I've had so many contractor stories, nightmare stories. Like um, the house, the house I'm in. Um, when I moved in, there needed to be like substantial repairs to one of the windows, or like three of the windows, really. And the last owners like kind of lied about how messed up the windows were. A lot of wood rot. So I had to buy three new windows, and the company subcontracted the work out to contractors. Um, and those contractors were not contractors. They were, they were, okay, how to say this as kindly as I can. Dudes that really appreciated methamphetamine that had firearms in their vehicle and had no idea what they were doing about installing windows. I think that is the nicest thing I could say about them. Um, so yeah, they finished the work and then I like contacted the dude who runs the company for the windows. And I was like, could you inspect the work? I'm not going to say anything about the work. I just want you to see what they did. 
And he, the, the owner actually, to his credit, came out and he was appalled, rightfully appalled about the quality of the work because, yeah, don't hire meth addicts to install windows in your house. It's a very bad idea. Um, and they had to rip it all, all out and do it all over again. And I had to worry about, like, a dude who was high on meth with, like, a handgun in his car, like, coming and killing me as a result of me, like, ratting him out to the company. And, yeah. Actually, initially, he was like, oh, I'll just get the same dude to fix it. I was like, no. No, you won't. No, you won't get the same dude to fix it. I don't want him in my house again. <laughs> You'll get someone else to fix it. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, God. It's not even, it's honestly not even the worst contractor I've had to work with in North Carolina, truth be told. Uh, that's just a notable one. Yeah, ag aggressively cocks Glock. So, five stars, right? Yeah, well, when I asked him about why he had a firearm in his dashboard, like a handgun on his dashboard, his answer was even more alarming, which was, oh, um, so if you need to know a little bit of, like, North Carolina geography, but his answer was, like, Essentially, oh, I have to do work in black neighborhoods from time to time. <laughs> oh my god. What? Yeah, that was his answer. So, big thumbs up to that dude. For for admitting, to say, say the quiet part out loud, I guess. What a numbskull. Uh, yeah, it's like, dude, no one's going to steal your meth. Um, okay, so back, back on track, we do have now a bakery, and we also have a windmill. Uh, they're not doing anything presently, because I don't have any wheat to, to, to thresh, uh, but we'll get around to it. And the bakery is covering all of the original housing, and what I'll try to do is I'll try to just fill out the rest of the houses around the bakery. Uh, and if you're wondering, the bakery, um... Well, what am I doing? The bakery supplies five desirability of the area. So. Good news there. Uh, so now we're up to 70. So next thing I'm doing now is to send a messenger out to Agnes. Because you guys voted for me to, uh, to contact Agnes. As a courting thing next. What part of NC so you know who to avoid? Uh, avoid the state. There, there are some nice parts of North Carolina. Uh, but there's not a good reason to come to this state over the adjacent states. I mean, I would say, like, the, you know, the mountains to the west are probably in the nice areas. If you like the coast and ocean, you could go out east. But everything in between is kind of a no man's land of Confederate flags and meth. So if you like Confederate flags and meth, come on down. I hope you stay, because I'm going to move out of the state and leave it behind. <laughs> Sounds like Georgia. I mean, yeah, it's just north, north Georgia. It's uh, if, if you ask a lot of people in, in North Carolina, like what they think about their state. They'll say, at least we're not South Carolina. And then in South Carolina, they'll say, like, at least we're not, like, Alabama. And then Alabama will say, at least we're not Mississippi. So it's like, how low on the rung of ladders can you go? Uh, all right. So, yeah, let's get the two visitors. And I'll try to get back on track. Uh, I am going to need some new housing. So, yeah, let's go ahead and put a house, a little homestead here. done connect it with a road and this overlaps with the bakery still oh Prince Yoda uh, young love how wonderful and naive uh, why should you get to experience happiness when I could not I tire of seeing your passion and optimism Let's see how your fablings deal with a little surprise, shall we? The Wicked Witch. So, a new curse. The fablings have all turned into skeletons. While this effect remains, fablings' hunger is doubled. It, uh, it sticks around for ten days. So, here are my uh, fablings. 
And uh, all of a sudden I have, this is Halloween, this is Halloween, stuck in my head. So you're welcome, now it's stuck in yours. But yeah, spooky witch. It's almost like Cinco de Mayo with how like green it is, right? I mean, we're exactly one month overdue for Cinco de Mayo. In terms of courting Agnes, three days remain. And we're starting to get bread. This is our first bread. Restores 50 hunger uh, up from the 10 hunger of a vegetable. So this is exactly the reason to stockpile so much. I mean, I probably have more vegetables than I need, but events like this, when you're already low on food, will kill you. So you'll become actual skeletons, not just uh, cute little skeletons, but like rather dead. Um, we have just discovered a new realm. So we have discovered, oh, I've been spelling her name wrong. Agnes, whatever. The Harvest Princess. Uh, so you guys told me to court her instead. I'm going to ask the same question again, just because we have new people tuning in. And also now that you've met all three, we have Winifred, the warrior princess, Agnes, the harvest princess, and Giovanni, the merchant prince. Um, and we can choose which one to court. But uh, my current objective is to court another ruler. So who to court? Again, left up to you, I know. Polling again, uh, yet another time. So I did mention uh, Winifred's gonna have me invest in uh, iron and weapons and uh, train my hero. And then uh, Agnes will have me make like flower and tulip farms and gift wheat and stuff like that. And then uh, Giovanni is all about coin, is all about that, uh, that dosh. Skeletons requiring more food is rather backwards. Um, yeah, I'm right there with you. It's spooky wooky. Some additional industries that I'm going to want to add pretty soon too would be the stone masonry. A lot of the next level of buildings are going to require planks and stone bricks. And stockpiling the planks and stone bricks early on is going to save me a lot of uh, headache later on. Hey, Magenta Fairy, it has been a while. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good indeed. So is this one. He's a happy little pup. Alright, you guys want me to go for Agnes. I'll just... Finish that fast. And let's go ahead and select a greeting of 30 vegetables. And I have to make her a friend in order to uh, to court her. So I'm going to um, save up some grain to be able to gift grain, which will push our friendship up to friend. I might be able to just do like a regular old greeting. And that might be enough to start courting her. I'll see. But um, it might be wise for me to stockpile some grain if it isn't enough.
Thank you for tuning in to Fabledom, which originally streamed live on Twitch June 5th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream of another game. Farewell, my fellow Fablings, 